If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Hi, I'm Rachel Johnson and thanks for joining us on Common Ground. In this week's episode, meet Pat Riegert from Bemidji, who constructs and plays cigar box guitars. Illustrator Emily Wendelin strives to make an identity for herself in the Bemidji arts community. And we head to Nevis, where dozens of musical groups from all over the Midwest have traveled to perform at Nevis Muskie Days. Nevis Muskie Days has been a lot of things over the years. It started out, you know, of course, 62 years ago, and uh, they used to have a carnival in town. And then uh, when the carnival stopped, it dwindled down, and they had a couple of bands, you know, and, and it was really kind of getting down to not that many people. But uh, we started bringing music back in, and this, the music festival, is like the new carnival. And it's really bringing people from farther and farther away every year. We had one band on Saturday night four years ago, and then we ended up three years ago having about six bands because we got the tent to put them in. Last year we had about 13 bands. This year we have 30 bands. 30. Four stages, two outdoor tent stages, more people than ever, more vendors than ever. It's just been fantastic. I really like about the feel of Nevis Muskie Days this year is it feels like a, a music festival. It feels like festivals I've been at. Uh, used to run around with the Grateful Dead in this neck of the woods and you, know, you get that spirit of everything just kind of flowing between people. A lot of things to see, a lot of fun, a lot of smiles and this year it's just clicked into that feel. My name is Brian Skinnis. I own Terrapin Station in Nevis, Minnesota, which is a music, art, and wellness center. And for the last several years, we've had musicians come and play at Terrapin Station and gotten a good network of people who uh, want to come up and play more. So that's how we've established the music into Nevis uh, Muskie Days. And with me is Steve Downing from KAXE and KBXE, uh, Northern Community Radio. And for the last two years, They've been part of this celebration, getting the word out on the radio station in KAXE and now this year with KBXE up in Bemidji. It's so nice to be associated with KAXE because the music that they play is really a lot of the kind of music that you hear at this festival of Nevis Muskie Days. Let's go. 
The music itself, it's pretty diverse. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's an important, it's always an important criterion at Northern Community Radio, diversity of programming. You never know what to expect when you turn on 91.7 or 90.5. You're going to hear, depending on the, on the uh, volunteer, you're going to hear some stuff you've never heard before, and you're going to hear it presented in a diff different way next to something you've never heard before. Critical. That's, and that's, uh, that's educational for all concerned. It's important to me because uh, gas prices are getting expensive and I want to have music in my hometown. <laughs> so we used to drive down to Bonnaroo in Tennessee and uh, Wakarusa down in Kansas and now down in Arkansas and, and it was just, it's so much fun to bring music here and it's an opportunity because we really haven't had that, a lot of the bands in this neck of the woods before or a place to really host them. We have a lot of different genres, folk, gospel, blues, jam bands, jazz. There's just so many different styles. And the way that we try to organize it is that there's different styles at different stages. So if you don't like this one particularly, you just move down to another one and we stagger them so people can see a little bit of all of them if that's what they want to do. Family is one of the real important things about Nevis Muskie Days. It's not just a bar band and you know songs that people are normally used to hearing. This is a one that stretches your uh, experience of music, and it also involves kids and old people. I mean, every every age really gets involved, uh, and I love seeing kids on the dance floor. Yeah. People that come from out of town, especially if they come from a big city where there's so many things where you can go out and see music and different things, when they come up to Nevis Muskie Days, I think they are uh, amazed at how a small town can bring this much talent in one spot for a weekend. And it's like, I can't believe this is Nevis, you hear that. One of the important missions of Northern Community Radio, in fact it's in the mission statement, is to build community in Northern Minnesota. And that's exactly what a festival like this does. Music and art, it enhances that, uh, that community. And every year it's evolved. And the way that it's grown and the way people respond to uh, the music that's played here has been phenomenal. I'm Emily Wenland. I'm a student at BSU. Um, I'm getting a degree in art. Um, I hope to be an illustrator. Um, some of my work up here right now is for a show I'm having at Dunn Brothers um, with a fellow student of mine, and it's kind of nature themed. Um, I really enjoy drawing animals and wildlife, and I thought this would be kind of a different spin on a nature shot you might see around Bemidji. Um, I drew different wildlife and then kind of added fun bright shapes and colors and lines to make it a little more visually interesting. Um, so yes, what I'm going to do today is just kind of go through um, how I sketch out an animal or come up with ideas um, for a piece. I'm going to draw a loon. Um, all of my work, all of my drawings are freehand. And like I said, I use reference pictures. So I'll just kind of do the basics. Basic how you learn to draw in whatever, seventh grade art class. Just start with ovals to get my proportions correct.
but I had seen a, an art piece online that was a deer head made out of a bunch of triangles. Mm -hmm. And that kind of inspired all of these pieces. I actually just was on kind of a, a kick of drawing animals and integrating the geometric shapes. So I actually had a lot of these before I even put together the show or like made it into a show. So like I made the art pieces first and then kind of figured out a theme afterwards after I had a few pieces already. I look forward to kind of developing a style um, of illustration that people can see one of my illustrations and kind of recognize it as mine without having to see my name right beside it. I think my style of drawing is pretty consistent. I mean, regardless of like all the crazy colors and triangles like in my work right now, um, I'm fairly realistic um, when drawing. And I think that kind of stays the same in all of my art pieces. Illustrations give a little more sense of imagination. Like you can draw in or add in things that wouldn't necessarily be realistic and you couldn't get a photo of. You can get a little more emotion or more of an idea or concept into an illustration versus just a photograph, like a photograph that would be with a newspaper article or something like that. Um, I guess maybe you can get more of an idea across. Um, there's a little more freedom in illustrations. I would like to get more into making greeting cards out of my illustrations. Living in a town like Bemidji has been really helpful um, to kind of make a name for myself as an artist. Bemidji's been really supportive of the arts and it's been helpful to have so many art fairs around town and different coffee shops and restaurants that are willing to take new artists work and display them. I did holidays by hand um, at the Boys and Girls Club in Bemidji and I sold quite a few there and then I did at that Lot 6 fair last summer. Having art be so much a part of the community, um, like having it displayed, having like the different sculpture walk and different things like that, um, I think it benefits the community and the artists. Um, I mean, I'm being an artist, I'm biased to having art around. I like doing, um, when I'm drawing or illustrating, I like using pencil and then using micron pens or pen over that because then you can just erase the pencil marking underneath and the pen will stay if you want to paint or collage on top of that then. So that's worked out well for a lot of pieces I've done. The colors I will probably use to paint this then won't be typical, normal colors. Um, to make it more interesting and stand apart from a photograph, I might use like purple or pink water rather than like blue sky, blue water, because when you're illustrating, you have that freedom to do that versus a photograph. <laughs> if anyone wants to check out my work, it's at the Yellow Umbrella for sale um, in downtown Bemidji.
Brett Riegert, and I build cigar box guitars. Here's one of the more recent builds that I did. This is, uh, we got a door hinge. We got the, our holes drilled in there. That's uh, the picture hanger with a bolt, right, a threaded bolt here. Uh, kind of a decorative uh, cover piece here. A grommet here for a sound hole, which works just fine. I've got here to lay out the marks, the third, fifth, seventh position, what have you on the front there. These are tacks put in, point of reference. Here we got our nut here with the threaded bolt. And these, on this one, I selected to use finishing nails for frets. Sanded these down on the side there, you know. I've got uh, GCG. And this is uh, also amplifiable. So you can really rock the neighbors out here. We like to do that. Here we got a door stopper for accents, sound effects, something a little odd and something kind of cool too at the same time. Hey, try anything. And this one is uh, very pleased with this one. Uh, this one plays very nice. into looking around and you know I saw a picture of a fella of a fella uh, holding one of these small little boxes and he's playing and I'm a guitarist myself and I thought what is that that's not a ukulele it's not a mandolin what has he got there and I looked at it closer and it had three strings on it no frets and I looked at it and it was said it was a CBG or cigar box guitar. And I thought, I got to know a little bit more about this. So I did a little exploring and, and to find out that they've, they've been around for a long time. The idea is, you know, that, that a lot of people back, you know, mid 1850s, they didn't have a lot of money. And so, down south, they used whatever they could find around, around the house, around the barn, and they would take, take whatever they could and make uh, homemade instruments. And uh, this is their entertainment. This is what they had. They made their own instruments, gathered around, visited with people, had a good time and brought their instruments and played played a lot. Uh, that was their entertainment back then. A uh, much more simpler time. about this is uh, there's a lot of history in, in these babies. It goes back quite a few years. But these babies they had Lightning Hopkins, B.B. King, and uh, most of us all know good old Jimi Hendrix. He played with one of these, started out with one of these. Let's go back into the mid-1850s. There's something really rootsy and raw about these things. That's what it's, that's why it has such a nice appeal. Hey. Hey. He's got a couple more uh, instrumentals like 
to do. Uh, and then uh, we got some other tunes. Here's an example of one I built. This one's a wood box, and this is a, a newer, newer box. Very clean, very sharp looking. And what I selected here, it's also set up for a three string, but I've got it set up right now for a two string. And here also, again, I used finishing nails for that. Add a nice stain to it. And then I've got uh, the different marks here to signify uh, where the um, your third, your fifth, and what have you scale is. Um, <clears throat> and got in here is like a little drain cup here for I spray painted it to kind of go with the thing and that's our sound hole that we're getting our sound from. So if you want to make a bigger one and if you want to put it in the middle uh, the thing is, is you, you can't go all the way down because you cut into your stick going through. So you can take the hole out there and use this, say this, and this would be another great sound cover if, if you wanted to. And this one is other than uh, getting it ready and uh, amplify, you know, getting it um, uh, wired for sound, um, this one's pretty much ready. This one I built to see if I could. Here we got a birdhouse. And I decided to give it a spin. And um, did a little, little different, couple different things on this one. This one is set up, set up for slide, for your, for the slide winders. And um, what I did here, this is a three string. I, uh, had my daughter paint freedom on the thing, kind of with the patriotic theme here I decided to go with. Got the, uh, found this, I thought it would be a cool effect on there. Stars and stripes. And I used this part, this was off an old guitar that I was just laying around that I thought, ah, I could use this for something. And sure enough. Uh, and then I um, built a bridge. And what I did inside here, I don't know if you can see, but this part right in here, this silver metallic-y part, it's a biscuit tin can. And the idea here is to get a resonator sound to come from it. And it amplifies it a little bit, and I really like resonators a lot, so I thought, I'm going to try to build a resonator uh, <coughs> within the box of a birdhouse and uh, the baby plays just fine for the slide winders. I really like the idea that these, these things are so unique. Uh, each one has its own sound. Each one has its own unique look about it. Each one has a, a flavor of its own. I'm really drawn by the, the simplicity, the rawness of it. It's just, a, it's really playable folk art is what it is. Whether you're a musician or not, these are just uh, one of a kind. They're not mass produced. And each one is uh, the real expression of the person that's building it. It's just one of a kind. It's you're never gonna build another one the same again. It's a little bit outside the box, shall we say. Outside the box in that you're not going for the $2,000 Taylor guitar. You're going for something that's more raw, more rootsy, and I like that. They are one of a kind. No uh, one will ever be the same. Thanks for tuning in to Common Ground. We'll see you next week. If you have a segment idea for Common Ground pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org or call us at 218-333-3022. If you enjoyed this episode of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. <laughs>